Hey there, aspiring real estate aficionados. In today's video, I'm diving deep into the captivating world of wholesaling real estate with a focus on the art of assigning contracts. I'm going to touch on the pros and cons of wholesaling real estate and just all the in and outs and give you some info about what it really means. If it's your first time tuning in, my name is Paul Grzenia. I'm a local realtor here in Phoenix. And if you're moving or just have questions about the market, give me a call. Okay. So what is wholesaling real estate? So basically think of it like the wild west of real estate. Basically you find a property, you assign it, you find an investor to sell it to, and you basically are buying it for X, selling it for Y, and taking the profit in between. You're basically the middleman between the property owner and the investor. So you hear a lot of people saying that you don't need any money to wholesale real estate. And that's true. You really don't need a ton. Depending on who you're working with, and how much they understand about real estate, you can lock a property up for a few hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars. It does require an earnest deposit with title to put a property under contract, but that's really all the money you need to wholesale real estate. And in some scenarios, you don't even need that. You can reach out to other investors or wholesalers and they'll help you with the earnest deposit. Now, what's the secret sauce to finding these properties? Well, some would say marketing. Some wholesalers do a ton of marketing. You're mailing to home sellers, you're cold calling, uh, you're finding maybe for sale by owners on Zillow or Craigslist or other websites, or you might be using a data software website like PropStream that allows you to search homes that are owner occupied with 10 years plus equity. Another option is just driving around the neighborhood. You probably hear this driving for dollars. If you see a house that looks like in, it's in distress, the yard hasn't been touched in a year, the roof is falling apart, there's a good chance that the person living there cannot afford to maintain that property. So what the gurus may tell you is to get out of the car, go knock on the door and ask them if they're interested in selling. Does this work? Not all the time, but it definitely does work. So I'd say one of the cons of wholesaling and just looking for deals in general is they're not always good deals. Make sure you are educated with real estate and the property that you might potentially buy. Because if you pay too much for it, you're not going to be able to turn around and sell it to an investor or flip it. If you buy a property for 500,000 and it's only worth, you know, 450 or 425, there's no room for a profit there. So you're either going to end up canceling the contract on that property or getting stuck with it yourself. And that's one of the downsides of wholesaling and just investing in real estate in general is that you need to know when to walk away because you're going to invest time and money and you may even start to become emotionally invested into this property. But when you run the numbers, it might not make sense. So you need to make sure that you don't get emotional about business, that you don't get emotional about this real estate transaction. You know, the numbers need to make sense to do the deal. So sometimes the best thing you can do is cancel the deal and walk away. So let's touch on what it means to assign a contract. It's an assignment. Okay. So you go to a seller and you say, Mr. Seller, I'd like to buy your house for $500,000. Okay. So now you have a contract, everything's signed, you know, they may require you to make a small deposit to open escrow. And now you have a 10 day inspection period or whatever it is you have written into that contract. Okay. So now you have this house under contract for $500,000. And so what this means is now you need to go find an investor to pay you more than you've assigned that contract for. So you have this house under contract for 500,000 and now you want to go assign it for 510,000. 
So that's basically how you make a profit in wholesaling. You buy it for 500, you sell it for 510. You are assigning the contract that you have to another person and that's how you get paid. So just be very careful when doing this. What tends to happen, you'll put a house under contract, you'll send it to an investor, and then what they're gonna do is they're gonna sign it, say for 510, and then they're gonna try and go assign it for 520. So make sure that you are selling this to an end user so they don't come back to you unable to sell it for an additional profit that you're actually selling it to someone who's planning to buy and hold it or flip it. Another thing you'll want to look out for when signing a contract with a seller is if they know what they're doing, they will probably have a non-assignable clause in their contract. As a realtor, if I have something I'm trying to sell as is or off market, I might go shop this to all my investors. And if I'm representing a client and not my own interest, I will make sure that any investor that comes to me is not also going to have any type of assignable language in the contract or wholesaling language in the contract. If I'm representing someone, I'm looking for an end user that again is going to buy this to flip or buy and hold long term. I don't want to assign this to someone else that's just going to shop it around and try and make a profit. Now, if you're a seller, this isn't always the best route. You see a lot of investors and wholesalers with these commercials and ads that say, are you looking to sell your property? You to wanna make it property? fast, easy, with no hassle and no, no commissions. Hassle. I'll buy your house, call I'll me today. I'll make call you an today. offer. Now that might be your best option, but it may not always be your best option because again, if you're an investor or a wholesaler, you're going to be trying to buy a property for 20 to 30% below market so you can do one of three things. Wholesale it, flip it, or buy it, renovate it, and hold it long term. In order to win in real estate, you need to win on the buy, not the sell. In any market, you win on the buy. So just be cautious if you're considering selling when you get these easy cash offers, this is what they're planning to do. As an agent, I probably get three to five texts a week from people looking for off-market deals. There must be some new guru who is teaching all these investors. Don't pick up the phone and call sellers. Don't mail sellers. Don't knock on sellers' door. Just reach out to every single realtor you can find and ask them for off-market deals. Now, I found a lot of investors this way, but again, when I have off-market deals, I go to these investors and when they come back with an offer, they have to be an end user because if I'm representing a client, I don't want to assign them a property with the intention that they're just gonna mark it up and then go shop it out there to try and make a quick profit because it happens. I see deals come across my desk time and time again that wholesaler A will send me and then the next day I see it from another company with a 10, 20, $30,000 markup on it. So the waters get a little murky, but just remember if you're wholesaling and you have a contract and you're assigning it to someone else and you allow them to go wholesale that contract to assign it again for a profit, if there's a scenario where they back out last minute, there is potential that you could get stuck with the property. So just keep that in mind. In the worst case scenario, if you don't cancel or you got stuck with the property, what is your plan B to either flip it or keep it long term? Now, I think wholesale is great if you're looking for a side hustle and you know you want to start by knocking on doors and driving neighborhoods or sending out some letters or even just hammering phones and asking people if they want to sell. I don't think it's as easy as some gurus on the internet make it seem, 
but I definitely think there's opportunity to find properties and assign contracts and make profits. I don't focus on this particular area of real estate as I'm an agent. I prefer to sell on the market as when you represent a client, my goal is to get them the most money possible. And the only way to do that is to get on the open market in front of as many people as possible. So to sum it up, wholesaling can be incredibly profitable and it really just depends on where you want to focus. You know, if you're looking to find deals for yourself, I think this might be a great way to exit some properties that don't make sense for you. Just make sure you know exactly what to do once you've locked up a deal. There are plenty of big buyers out there looking for deals every day. So it's not that hard to sell them or sign them once you've locked something up. And if you have questions like where to start, you need some tips or some pointers, or curious about some of the software you can use, give me a call, shoot me a text. I'd be more than happy to run down and give you the brief wholesaling 101 class. It's free, I don't charge, I'm not a guru. I'm just always happy to help anybody interested in learning more about real estate and all the different avenues you can use to make money in this business. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you got something from it, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you checking it out and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.